One of the most underrated and somewhat glossed over parts of the risk assessment process, in my experience, is the risk acceptance criteria. It is very easy to define it as, well, everyone should know if that is a high or low risk. But the fact of the matter is, those conducting the assessment, especially if you spread the task out and is not someone on the compliance team, will check the box that they accept the risk and move on if given the chance. If you want an accurate and repeatable process, there needs to be a clear definition of what is acceptable risk and what kind of loss the organization can absorb and still run in prime form. Starting with likelihood, how often does a defined risk occur throughout a given period? In this example, we are saying that an occurrence once a year is rated low or unlikely to happen scenario, whereas more than five will be rated very likely. That middle ground, two to five, gives us room to play with the numbers a little. But you see, having a defined interval allows the same and repeatable grading system. We dig a little deeper here on the impact side. Now we are looking at where the risk scenario may impact one or more categories. The highest rated group then becomes the rated risk impact for the scenario. If the risk we are grading would have a very little regulatory or reputational impact, but would cost us $250,000 to recover from, we will rate the impact high. We then take those numbers and drop them into a grid and determine the acceptability of the risk. 1 and 2 can be considered a low risk. 4 and 5 can be considered a high risk. The standard doesn't define the grading scale, so this will get back to what is acceptable risk level for the business. Do business requirements set that low risk is just 1 and 2, where 3 are mediums and 4 or 5 are high? Or do business requirements set low risk as just a 1 and 2 and 3 are medium and 4 or 5 are high? I can see this playing out in the financial or healthcare industry, which deals heavily in personal data.